My name is Boyd Sharp. I'm 39 years old. I'm an IT guy. Working in an office all day, and uh, I am in the biggest rut. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and uh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Boyd has no background in mixed martial arts, but somehow he came up with the idea of, hey, I want to try this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yeah. hard here, let's go. Yeah. I've never been in a fight in my entire life, but in one year, I'm going to get in a mixed martial arts cage and fight a professional fight. You better get up and fight. When I told people that I was going to do this, they said, A, you're nuts, and B, can I come too? You better get up and fight. I'm just trying to show that ordinary people, when they put their minds to it, can do extraordinary things. Of the 300 people who tried out, only 13 are left after eight months of full-on MMA training. When they started, they knew nothing. The survivors have made incredible progress, but are still uncertain whether they know enough to fight professionally in a few short months. Several cubes over the age of 40 are still here, barely. Boyd Sharp's body is in constant pain, but he has spent more than a year of his life getting this program off the ground and the prospect of not fighting is a frightening one. He's put so much time and effort into this. I, I am a little worried about him if at the end he doesn't get to fight uh, because, you know, this is a big part of his identity now. When I entertain the thought that at the end of this, Peter is not going to let me fight, when I think about that, I, I actually panic because if he doesn't let me fight, a small part of me is going to feel that all of this was for nothing, and I have sacrificed way too much. I have had too much time away from my family. I have put too much pressure on my wife. I have robbed my children of nearly a year with their father. I just can't let that happen. I consider quitting all the time, I think. I think it just, it always pops up in my mind because it's always there. I don't know if it's a, a strength of character that's enabling me to keep going because I've committed to doing it, or if it's a weakness of character that I can't walk away even though that I should. One reason many fighters are unable to ever fight is the inability to train due to injury. It's a threat for all the cubes, especially the ones over 40. You do have more than the average, you know, person's in, amount of injuries that I would see. <laughs> right, so when somebody comes in to see me, typically, if they have more than two, we usually have to agree that we'll treat the one problem that's giving them the most issue right now, like the biggest complaint. And uh, you wouldn't be able to talk to anybody in this sport that isn't working through at least one injury most of the time. Like you listed off a, a good six injuries that are, are giving you some issues, so we're going to start addressing them all here as soon as possible. Uh, those guys combined have had broken ribs and concussions and smashed up shoulders and banged up knees and hands, and uh, they don't heal as quick as the, as the young guys. I find now my body is breaking down. Uh, I'm extremely sore in the joints and the bones. Um, you know, muscle-related pain I'm, I'm used to, but uh, this type of torment is pretty excruciating by times. Yeah, that doesn't feel good. Boyd and Rick have no choice but to take a week's rest from training to help their bodies recover. In this program, you kind of have to decide what's an injury and what's not an injury and you realize that what's an injury in real life is not what's an injury in this sport. And you've, you've really got to have the mental fortitude to say, I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm in pain, I hurt like hell, I don't wanna go, but God damn it, I'm gonna go. Normally, fighters spend eight to 10 weeks preparing for a fight. The Cubes have been at this for 34. Peter recognizes the need to lighten the physical load and invites the Cubes out for some beach training. both mentally and physically just absolutely wearing on everybody. And you can really see it, some of us older guys, I, 
I haven't seen Rick now in a week or two and for the first time he's not responding to my texts and the last two times I've seen him the man is in complete pain and he can't sleep at night with knee pain and hip pain and you start to you're hearing a lot more of that kind of grumbling and you see guys and gals coming to the gym now where we used to be you know pretty pumped up to see each other and you kind of see the dread when you're walking into the gym the training is just it's getting that painful and it's that much of a of a grind. I mean, got a little bit more experience with Coach Martell now. And last time when he first said we're going to go to Citadel Hill, the green grass, and that turned out to be nothing but pain. I'm sure he's going to make pretty much every pleasurable experience, including the sauna, comes to mind, absolutely miserable. So I'm sure that's going to be no different. I think it's Peter and Jerome. Yeah, Probably. Peter and Jerome. The guy was driving like an idiot, so it's definitely <laughs> Jerome. <laughs> Jerome just brought his boat to drop Peter off, but I don't think they thought about how he's going to get him on the beach. There's like four foot waves here and he's got like a 28 foot Baja, $200,000 boat and they're just floating out there. Boy, you got any water wings for Pete? <laughs> Come on, Peter, swim! His depth finder, you know, sailing four feet and 18 feet and four feet and 18 feet. So uh, it was a lot of fun. It was interesting. <laughs> it was a great way to arrive. Brutal. What the hell was that? Nothing like making an awkward entrance. I thought you were waiting for us to come out with a raft for you or something. <laughs> I can't. I can't tread water very well. If I stop, like I can't float. If I stop moving, I sink. <laughs> Peter, what are we doing today? We are going to be doing some takedowns, some wrestling on the beach. <laughs> the balance in the sand's a little different, it slows you down, makes your reaction time a little bit slower. The traditional Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of the guys, uh, hands on those guys just to get down on the beach and fight. It's just fun. True off. What you say? True off. <laughs> <laughs> Before, we, I think maybe we were trying to feel like a team. Now it just now it just feels like a team. It's like, it's awesome. All of the cubes have been feeling the effects of nine months of full-time MMA training. Head trainer Peter Martel recognized the need to lighten the training load and do some activities outside of the gym. Building a strong sense of team for the final months of their training is key to being successful in the cage. We've lost a lot of people. We've lost certainly over half the people who started the program. And we're here having some fun, spending some time together and celebrating the fact that we've overcome a lot of shit. Today is gonna to be tidal bore rafting for the cubes. We're in the, the Shubenacadie River, where a huge tide rushes in, meets the river, and creates a mass of fresh and saltwater chaos. It's uh, supposedly a bit of a natural roller coaster. By the time the whitewater rafting was over with, it was undeniable that we're a team. And uh, that's another example of how we, we went through something that was fun and positive and was uh, a shared experience that we could celebrate and relive afterwards. When we're in the gym, uh, we're either A, focused on the training, or B, we fall into this pattern of conversation that's sort of half teasing, half trying to take each other's minds off the fact that we're exhausted <laughs> and in pain. But when we get out in a relaxed atmosphere like this, uh, people tend to open up. I found like the whole time that we were, we were training, everyone was like, no, 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 I'm never gonna quit, I'm never gonna quit, I'm never gonna quit. They just kept saying that. And then it was just like, tick, 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 and that's, it's us, you know what I mean? Like, it was crazy. If you came back now after taking two months off, you'd be eaten alive. Just the training is completely different now than it was yeah. two, three months ago. This has become kind of part of who I am. I, I've immersed myself so much and committed so much already that I want to continue on. Um, I don't want to not be here now. 
Jock was originally only interested in the training because he and his best friend Luke knew this would be on television. Would you like one? But he has survived training until now and has fallen in love with the sport, even though Luke has already quit. I didn't think I was going to make it this far. Um, not necessarily because of the training. I knew cardio-wise it could last. But, like I say, I came into this program because there's another television opportunity. Not because I was an MMA fan. And I, it's kind of like now I can't quit. I want to I want to finish this. I want to see this through. And I don't know. I mean, I got a kid coming. And, uh, and I don't know how, what that's going to be on my training. Yeah, it, it doesn't... There's two parts to that from somebody who has three small kids. Mm -hmm. The advice that I can give you is, first of all, you have to be 100% upfront with your wife, and you guys need to decide ahead of time yeah. if you're going to do it or if you're not. Yeah. If you go into it sort of, oh, let's see how it goes, it'll make for one unhappy fucking marriage. Yeah. But if you make the decision upfront, at least then you both know it's on the table. I know Jock really likes the training but he doesn't really like fighting. He's been pretty open about that. But if Jock were to decide that his time would be better spent with his young son and with his wife, I'd support that. Oh. You waking up, Grumpy? Oh, what's that face? <laughs> with everything going on right now, the baby moving, um, building a house, everything, I think I have to step down from the fight at least. I know I'm not gonna be able to train the way I need to, to compete. Um, I'm hoping to continue to train on a casual basis to support the team um, and be there for them, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fight. It doesn't look like it. My training has, has dipped a lot. Um, the, the baby is, will be two weeks old tomorrow, and I haven't been to class since before that, so it's about almost three weeks since I've been to training. Um, I get to the gym a little bit when I can in between, but I'm noticing uh, just everything is kind of dropping a little bit because you're not in the gym six days a week, two, three, four hours a day. Now that I have this little guy, it's like my attention is there. I want to be there. I want to be a present father. I want to support my wife. I honestly don't know how Boyd does it. With three kids, one is under a year, so he would have started the program with a newborn kind of makes me feel like a wussy with just one, and these guys get like two, three, four kids. But it's, it's really, really hard. It's really hard. I'll miss him because he's a fantastic training partner and he's phenomenally athletic and he pushes me and he makes me better. But as a father who has missed so much with his kids, I could see and I could support his decision to leave if he wanted to do that. With Jock removing himself from the list of potential fighters and two more cubes doing the same, the group is officially left with 10 contenders with 10 weeks to go until fight time. Bye. There you go, there you go. I think what grows you as a person, what helps you to develop as a human being is when you say, I can quit, I have the ability to quit, I have the ability to leave and walk away at any moment, and I choose not to. That's what helps you develop and grow as a person. I think that the people that walked away from this lost that very, very core, valuable lesson. I really think that a lot of people look at this and go, oh, I could never do that. What they have learned is that it's just a matter of doing it, putting your mind and your heart into it and not quitting. Hard work and determination combined with Peter's training have gotten them very far, but it's now up to the commission to decide if they have the necessary skills to receive their pro license. they have learned or how hard they have trained. The 10 cubes who are left standing need to prove they are capable fighters. Tonight, they put it all on the line, attempting to get their pro license. Today is the day we get assessed by the uh, boxing commission, the fight commission, to see if we're actually competent to compete in MMA. So this is a big day. In some ways, this is as much of what we've been working for as the actual fights. Because if we don't pass the test today, then that means we're not good enough. 
I'm kind of nervous as much for Peter. It's almost, as it's much as it's a milestone for us, it's a skills test. So it's, it's a bit of a milestone for Peter to, to see whether with an independent regulatory body, whether or not they actually give an independent assessment as to whether or not he took a bunch of clowns in one year and made them competent enough to be considered professional fighters. Okay, you guys, I want you to listen up. Here, decide whether you get a license or not, okay? Now, I'm not here to see the quality of what you can do. I want to see that you have the basics and that you can protect yourselves. The cubes are broken up into two groups so they can be properly assessed. They're required to show a variety of striking techniques along with various submission holds. You're, you're going into something that's dangerous. Okay, it, it's dangerous. You know, people get in there, you, and you're here, it's controlled. You get in there, people get excited, okay? I get hurt, who pays the rent? If I get really hurt bad, who wipes my nose and goes and gets me water and looks after me? Because it can happen. So basically, you're out there on, on your own. You're out there on your own. So is it worth it? This is no surprise, it doesn't scare me. And uh, I'll walk in, give it everything I have. Rick's overall technique isn't exactly polished, but he's a natural fighter who can handle himself in a fight. He hopes this will be evident enough to the commission. Uh, Rick, good kicks and knees, good strong kicks and knees. You, you went, went hard the whole time. Same with your grappling, your submissions. Really good job. I think it went smooth. I mean, I didn't really know what to expect, but I think I did everything that, uh, that they asked of me. I was quite surprised when he said my kicks were good. Fill it all out. Fax it into Hubert, send it with all your medical information and stuff. Yeah. And then when you come to the way and bring $25, and we'll give you your license at the way. Okay. That way you don't have to try to get out there. Make sure as soon as they pick an opponent for me, you send them a medical waiver because they're going to need it. <laughs> all right, good job. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. This cage fighting is extremely dangerous, but when you look at what I've done through my whole life with pro wrestling and 20 years of bouncing and bars, this is uh, uh, way more controlled than I'm used to. I'm a licensed professional fighter now. I did what I set out to do. There's only one thing left to do. Let's beat the hell out of somebody. Rick's got his license. That's fantastic. I was a little concerned. I was a little concerned. I mean, Rick's, he's had so much trouble with his hips. He's had so much trouble with injuries. I don't get the feeling he's taken the best care of his body in the past 41 years. If Rick can get his license, I can. <laughs> Boy, how, how old are you? I'm 41. 41. Well, you got any killer instinct in you at all? Uh, I'm developing. We are doing a lot of thinking there. Thinking to get you hurt. Okay, see if you can give me a round of good flow. Good flow. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I think that no matter what I did, no matter how ready I thought I was, no matter how ready Pete thought I was. If those guys got it in their head that I wasn't ready to fight, then this entire year was a waste. Why do you want to do it? I like challenges. And this is just a different one. Okay. This, uh, this year has changed my life. This year has changed, I've changed physically enormously. I've changed. Emotionally, I've changed psychologically. So far, this has been a, a fantastic experience for me, injuries and all. And if a fight at the end is there for me, then I take that as the cherry on top. Mary? Yes. Kids? Yeah, three small ones. Three small ones. What does your wife think about you doing this? Um, she doesn't like it. She's, she's supportive of my of my determination to succeed, but she would prefer definitely that I wasn't doing it. You complete your medicals, you complete the application forms, and you pay $25, and you'll have a professional license. I knew some of them were better than others. I thought that some of them might not pass. They all did. I mean, I know that some of them still will never fight. Some of them will fight. Some of them 
you know, who could fight and do well won't fight. Some of them who should never fight will fight. It's just the, you know, that's the way it is. You gonna frame it? Uh, I'll frame it when I win my fight. <laughs> I think you should de definitely frame it. That's a long, long road. Not many people can say that they're gonna fight pro MMA. So. <laughs> The, uh, you, you must yeah, be proud. I am. I, I, I'm proud, but I gotta say I'm not happy. I think I have a bigger fight ahead of me inside my head than I do inside the cage at this point. <laughs> According to what I keep hearing from you and what I'm hearing from Hubert. Um, did you notice how I wasn't terribly happy with your sparring? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that killer instinct is what I'm talking about. When you get hit from someone one of the cubes, you, you know, you're it's fine. But when someone like Morteza hits you, you, you crumble, you fall down. He's not hitting any harder. You should be trying to tear more, Morteza's head off because you think he's better than you. Right. You, you want to always step on the guy who's above you. That's how you get up. Right. You can't be so nice. Mm -hmm. This isn't a nice game. You have to start looking for blood when you spar, okay? Yeah. And you got to find out whether you have that killer instinct or not. Not everybody has it. So, looks like we have Robin Black for your opponent. He's got nine fights. That says it all right there, you have none. He's been training for six years, seven years. You've been training for one. Phenom, maybe you could go in and, you know, beat him. I'm not saying you don't have a chance. I'm just saying you've got a big hill to climb. Tough fight. Robin Black is a pro MMA fighter and commentator. Like Boyd, he fought his first fight at the age of 40 and feels he has one more pro fight in him. Robin! Black! It was interesting when I heard that uh, they wanted Boyd for his first fight to fight me. And I don't think I'm any kind of world beater. I'm not the toughest fighter in the world, but I know fighting. I could totally relate to what he's doing, and I can relate to why he's doing it, because the idea of fighting in a cage is sort of this ultimate challenge. At 36 years old, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I could actually do this. It, it's a crazy idea. It's like a punchline, you know? It's something people in a bad movie do when they get old and they go through a mid midlife crisis. You know, you're standing there in front of a couple of thousand people and a couple of thousand people watching on TV, wearing nothing but a little tight pair of pants, bloodied up, fighting another guy. You feel pretty alive. Ultimately, I, I took the fight because, I mean, it's not the right, necessarily the right reason to take a fight, but I took the fight because I'm pretty sure I'm going to win it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to win it without getting hurt. But when you start out doing it, it's incredibly intimidating, and I can relate to him wanting to do it, and I think it's cool that he wants to do it, but I'm the wrong guy for him to do it with. When the ref's going to stop if you don't do something. Come on, Boyd, what are you doing? Peter isn't naive about this matchup. He knows Boyd has little chance of beating Robin. Get up, get up, but there's up. still a chance. Come on, Boyd, let's go! Peter is insisting Boyd take his training to the next level. And after weeks of trying to get it organized, Peter arranged for the Cubes to hit the road to go to the Henzo Gracie Academy in New York. This is where Peter got his black belt in jiu-jitsu and will be great exposure for Boyd and the Cubes to prepare. They now have two months to be ready. Next time on Cubicle to the Cage, the Cubes make the 15-hour drive from Halifax to the Big Apple to train at the legendary Henzo Gracie Academy. A Gracie, a Gracie, everybody knows the name Gracie. I'm losing my mind, are you kidding me? My game has jumped enormously. Yeah, yeah. Now here we go, yeah, yeah, come on, all right, now here we go, here we go, yo, like a doormat, like a flat hell from the weight of the days, they all seem the same, are you slipping past the limit of all you can take, unsteady the everyday, are you ready to break, you better get up and fight. Better get up and fight, better get up and fight, so You've been beat up, knocked down, and kicked around on the hard ground Trying to make your way through the background Trying to get ahead, but you're bled tough, but the luck's still stuck in the rough Have you had enough?